you go. All right. Welcome, uh, BMIN 321 students. Uh, this is uh, Jonah Peterson and Matthew Dawson. We're going to be going over an example about system realization. All right. So what system realization is, um, you're essentially given a transfer function, right? So we're going to solve for real components on the circuit, just given the transfer function. Um, we're going to show you how to do that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to convert the circuit to frequency domain. Second, you're going to use like nodal or mesh or any other technique, right, to solve for your output voltage or current, depending on what you're solving for. Um, and then lastly, you're going to factor the transfer function to make it neat so you can solve <clears throat> for those final values by inspection. Um, and then all that's going to make more sense um, when Jonah goes through this problem that he created. So to start off with our transfer function, h of s, right, is equal to 5 over 10s plus 7. And we are asked to solve for R1, R2, and our capacitance value for C. So, so you can see this is the circuit that we came up with. Um, all right, Johnny, you take it away. All right. So as you can see from the circuit, we're given an undisclosed input voltage directly into a resistor in series, which branches off into a capacitor and a second resistor. And the V out is labeled as the voltage across the resistor. This is usually what you would consider to be your load uh, resistor. Now, for our first step, uh, as you see just below the uh, circuit, it's our converting to frequency domain. And as we know, um, R1 and R2 stay the same as they are resistors and they just get transferred immediately into impedances. Now the capacitor, immediately becomes one over CS, which is another thing that you hopefully have gone over in your first few lectures. Now, the first step that I did here is that I did nodal analysis. Now, nodal analysis, when going over um, this problem, you might be asking, what node are we looking at here? Well, the node in particular is the node V out, which I'm going to label as this whole branch up here, because it is one node as you can see both are connected and both can be labeled as a singular node. Now, um, from this node here, we're gonna be deriving our main nodal equation. Now there's only just one, as there's only one node that we don't necessarily know what it is. So I'm gonna be going down a bit further to our nodal equations and doing our nodal analysis at the circuit, we get V out minus V i, over R1, which makes sense with the circuit above as we're simply looking at the node and just looking at everything that comes in is negative and what goes out is positive. Hence, V out minus VI over R1. You apply the same concepts to the capacitor and the resistor and you get the second and third parts of that equation, which is V out minus zero over one over SC plus V out minus zero over R2. And all of that, of course, is going to equal zero. Now that we have our main equation, our next step is just simply going to be getting into a bit of a simpler form. So what I did next is that I multiplied every single one of those fractions by every common denominator, or every denominator, rather. And you get the expression below which looks rather messy, but it will end up turning out quite nice because then we don't have to do any of the manipulation later. And that's going to be V out in brackets, one over SC times R2 plus R1 over SC plus R1 R2 in parentheses minus the input voltage times R2 over SC equal to zero. Now from here, the next step is a little bit tricky, especially when you're kind of just learning system realization but it's basically getting the transfer function that you already have. Now, the way that you do that is that you see a transfer function is V out over V I my, per, by definition. So what we get is we get R2 over SC over R2 over SC plus R1 over SC plus R1 R2. And what I did after that is I multiplied the entire equation by SC over SC. Now, why did I do that? Well, if you look at our the next line below it, what that did is that it made it look really nice because then we don't have any of the S's in the denominator. And since the transfer function we were given 
didn't have any S's in the denominators per the fractional sides, you can see that it works out quite well. You have R2 over R2 plus R1 plus R1, R2, SC. That All of those numbers factor in quite nicely into our transfer function. And just by inspection, we get our final answers here of R1 equal to 2 ohms, R2 equal to 5 ohms, and our capacitor being 1 farad. And so that is a basic example on how uh, system realization works. You can also do it with capacitors and inductors. Here we did it with two resistors and a capacitor. You can get multiple different versions. Sometimes they give you some of the components, but here we were asked for three individual and using only one nodal equation in a given transfer function, we were able to do that quite successfully and quickly. In the recap, <clears throat> you're gonna pretty much follow the same procedure for every single system realization that you're gonna do. Obviously for every single uh, circuit's gonna be different, whether mesh or nodal is gonna be optimal. Um, for this one, Jonah loves using nodal. So uh, this was a perfect example to use nodal as well, but you could have definitely solved a similar circuit using mesh as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hope this helped with all of your system realization needs.